Hey everyone, this is Captain Kimo and I have a quick video on HDR and how I use photomatics to create high dynamic range photos. And this photo right here would be a good example of why I use high dynamic range to um, get more detail and colors in my images. So this image right here is a uh, evenly exposed image. So the, the exposure is, let's say, if you were to shoot your camera, just to point and shoot in, in program mode or auto mode or whatever uh, this is the exposure that it would probably uh, produce so you can see here that the uh, Sun is blown out so we don't have any color or any details in the Sun there's there's nothing here and in the foreground here you have really dark shadows that you can't see so what we do here for HDR is we take multiple exposures to cover those areas that are either too dark or blown out so when we set up the camera to shoot HDR we'll we'll bracket the images and what happens is we'll get two more images one will be a darker image which is two exposures under and this will cover the uh, detail the colors in the blown out areas where in the original exposure here it's blown out the underexposure will cover that and then it will take a third exposure and this will be an overexposed image and you can see detail in the shadows here where in the original photo it's dark so we take those three exposures and I use photomatics uh, there are different HDR software out there I use photomatics and we merge them together and um, photomatics will create an image like this with nice colors nice rich details so you got details in foreground and you got color and detail in the highlights so this would be the regular exposure what you would normally get and if you do HDR this is what you would end up having HDR can also produce some very um, dramatic images I'm sure you've all seen them and if you process the image you can produce something like this now this is this is more towards um, artistic and creative images but it's really up to the photographer or the artist to produce the image so there is control over over how you want to create your HDR images. Okay, so now that I've uh, covered that, let's go ahead and show you how I actually do it, how I uh, take those exposures and combine them in Photomatix to uh, create the image. Okay, so here is the Photomatix uh, window. You can load your exposures in multiple ways. You can click this button and you can browse for the exposures. Uh, a window will open up and you can browse for it, but I prefer not to do it this way. If you were to browse for it, you would just select images that you want like that click on control to select multiple images and then you just hit open and it would load it into the window here but I'm not gonna do it like that I prefer the drag and drop method which is a lot easier because I can find the photos that I want easier using the directory so this is the three exposures that I'm gonna want to use so I'm just gonna select those three and just drag and drop it into the window and uh, once I do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to get this um, pop-up menu that, you know, it, it pops up all the time. So I just hit OK because I want to process the image. And then you're just going to get this window again where um, these are the images that we're going to use. So we click OK on that. And then we have a pre-processing options here. Um, we have align source images and this is good for when you're hand holding your camera um, normally when I shoot HDR I shoot it using a tripod um, if you're not using a tripod if you click on this this will actually help to align the images because there will be some movement when you take the photo handheld so this does the reasonably good job of uh, aligning the images for you uh, this is remove ghost what ghosting is is if you were to take three different photos and let's say you take a photo of a boat or a car and that car is moving well the car is going to be in different areas uh, for the three exposures so if you hit removing or remove ghost uh, automatic it actually does a pretty good job but uh, for this image we won't need to remove any ghosts so we won't uh, uh, we won't have that clicked. I'll actually show you another set of exposures on how to do that manually. So, for now, we'll uh, we'll focus on this uh, particular batch of photos, which was that beach photo that I showed you earlier. And re remove noise. I like to remove noise on my images, so I'll leave that checked, and I'll leave reduced chromatic aberration checked. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for this window. So if you hit OK, what's going to happen is it's going to take to a tone mapping area, and this area will allow you to create the photo. All right, so here's our image um, after Photomatics is done 
processing and merging the exposures together. Now we're in the toe mapping window. This is where it starts to where it starts to blend in the colors and the detail and stuff. And it this is where you have full control over how you want your image to look. So if you want it more aggressive, you can make it more aggressive. But if you want it uh, more natural, you can make it more natural also. Um, you have three different uh, methods of tone mapping. You have uh, you have tone mapping using detail enhancer and then tone mapping using tone compressor. Now detail enhancer uses pixels from the entire image and kind of calculates the uh, the photo in that area it's called uh, global tone mapping and then uh, tone compressor uses local compre uses uh, local uh, local pixels to kind of blend them together tone mat or tone compressor is actually more natural so if you use tone compressor the pixels will come out looking more natural more uh, more realistic versus uh, more dramatic but uh, with detail enhancer though you have more control over the shadows and the highlights so I tend to use detail enhancer more than any of the other tone mapping methods the third method here is exposure fusion now that that's good I tend to use that more for nighttime HDR images when I have to uh, cover some of the blown out areas in street lights so that that's good for that but uh, I really don't use it for anything else um, my main uh, tool here in Photomatics is just the uh, detail enhancer in tone mapping under detail enhancer and that's what I prefer to use and right now over here you have your presets so you can scroll down here and they have various presets um, some uses exposure fusion as you can see here and some use de photographic here and then you go into more of the uh, fusion and you can just start selecting or start from a preset if you wanted uh, normally that's what I do I'll just play with the preset until I, I get to an image that I, I like so once I find a, uh, a preset that I like I'll work from there and normally the preset that I do like is uh, is in the uh, tone or the detail enhancer so I kind of like the first one so we're just gonna go ahead and use the default here the first one so once I select the default setting, I'll start playing around with my uh, my sliders here. We have sliders to control a whole bunch of different things. Uh, the top slider is strength. Now strength will control how dramatic your image looks. So if you go to the left here, you'll make the image a little more uh, realistic. If you go to the right, it'll darken up the sky will uh, and will create more colors in the sky. And then it'll brighten up the foreground, which will give you more detail in the foreground. So it'll also make the image more dramatic. So usually I tend to go right around the middle. Or for some of my more dramatic photos, I'll boost it all the way up to 100. Uh, but for this photo, I'll keep it around 80 maybe 70 and that looks pretty good um, next is color saturation that's that's pretty uh, straightforward you go to the uh, right there it'll really boost up the colors and if you go to the left it'll pull out all the colors now Photomatix is uh, one of the better programs when you boost the color it really just boosts the colors and it looks really nice um, some of the programs or HDR programs out there that boost colors really make the color look blotchy and um, just just really bad so um, I like boosting the colors in Photomatix because they it does really look uh, nice um, but for this photo let's just move it down a little bit that might be just a little too much so we'll keep it around 80 uh, luminosity is if you want to brighten up the detail in the let's say the uh, the shadows luminosity would be a good way of doing that uh, you bring it up and you can get some details in your shadows uh, for this image it actually looks better if you just leave luminosity right around the middle this will give you some better contrast um, detail contrast that will give you contrast in your image I like to keep detail contrast around where luminosity is most of the time so if you were to bring it all the way up it will just try to um, produce more contrast for your image so for this one, it looks good basically right around luminosity. So I'll leave it right, right, right there. Next we have a lighting adjustment. Now you have two options. You have a slider to adjust the lighting adjustment. And you have, if you click on lighting effects, you have five buttons. Now the five buttons is pretty straightforward. You click it and it gives you a result. So medium is good for this one. If, the, if you want better detail and finer details and actually a more realistic um, uh, look I would recommend using the slider um, the slider gives a better uh, better uh, result for more 
for more realistic um, images. So, but for this photo, I'm just going to click on that and use medium because that actually looked pretty good. So, and next we have the more options here. So, if I click that, we get a bunch of more options for us for tone mapping. And the first one that comes up here is smooth highlights. Um, this will brighten up your highlights. So, if you bring it all the way, you can see the highlights over here is kind of getting uh, brighter. Um, I tend to leave this right around one. Um, I'll, I'll show you why later. Um, white point this will bring up the whites in your image will lighten up your image if you bring it up and if you bring it down it will darken up your image so I kinda like it right around there so we'll leave it at that um, next is black point this will bring up the shadows in your image or the dark areas of your image and just to give it some contrast we'll bring up the black point some and gamma is um, I, I think of gamma as the midpoint of the image. So if you bring it up to the right, you'll brighten up your image, or you bring it to the left, you'll darken the image. Um, I tend to like it right there. It's different for every photo, so um, that right there looks good. Temperature, that's another straightforward one. If you bring it to the left here, it'll uh, it'll make your image cooler. You bring it to the right, it'll make it warmer. Um, I tend to keep it right around the middle, unless I want my image to be cooler which actually I kinda do so I'm gonna make it just cool just a little cooler and I'll leave it there um, micro smoothing now micro smoothing can make your image really dramatic so if you leave it to the right or the left side here it'll be really like aggressive and dramatic and you bring it to the right here you'll lose a lot of the um, contrast a lot of the detail so I tend to leave it right around the middle also but uh, for this photo it looks pretty good right around the uh, the lower left side here um, next is saturation highlights you can bring the uh, colors in the highlights up if you want by clicking that you can see the colors in the highlights just brighten up so let me show you real fast if you go to the left here it'll pull out all the colors so this can make a pretty cool effect uh, but we'll we'll actually boost the colors I like it like that um, saturation shadows is for the shadows like the foreground areas where it was darker if you move the saturation shadows to the right it'll brighten up the uh, or it'll increase the saturation in the shadows um, if you move it to the left it'll pull out all the color so pretty straightforward there also so we'll just boost it up a little bit and the next few options here we have shadow smoothness if you bring this up this will smoothen out the foreground of the shadow now there's something to note here if I were to move smooth highlights to zero and this is why I, I, I have smooth highlights at one and you were to move uh, shadow smoothness you would rarely see an effect so normally I have or I have uh, smooth highlights to a one just so I can get a little bit of or a more of a dramatic effect in my shadow smoothness um, I like having shadow smoothness on when I want to pull my eye towards the highlights versus the detail in the foreground so um, so if I were bring it up you can see the highlights are you know get brighter so I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit because I want kinda want my eye to kinda come from here and then bounce right to the uh, the light there in the background and that's that's pretty much it shadow clipping I don't mess with that pull it all the way up it does some really funky stuff it's actually good for if you wanted to make a silhouette so <clears throat> for this we're we don't want a silhouette so we're just gonna bring it back uh, 360 image you don't need to worry about that uh, reset the default that will reset it back to the default uh, this is undo and this is move forward so we can undo what we just did and then we can move back to what we did uh, presets you can actually save presets so I can save what I just did here I can click here and then go down to here you probably can't see that um, but I can save presets I can click on that and it will allow me to save it to save the preset so I'll cancel that I don't really want to save the preset right now you can also load presets from here um, you can click the load preset button and just navigate to where you need to um, find your preset and just click on it and click open and that that's pretty much it so we're we're done here all you have to do now is hit the process button and you're done so once you hit the process button photomax will 
process the photo out. So once you hit the process button, PhotoMax will process the image and then all you have to do from here is save it. You can hit the save setting button here or I like to go up here and just save as and just save my image to a directory somewhere and you're done. You have your image. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close this out and then we're going to go proce process a photo that has ghosting. I'm going to show you that really fast. Okay, so here is an example photo of ghosting. Now, I shot this train and the train was moving, so as I shot the train, it moved. So you can see it move and it's moving. So this is the underexposed image to cover the, cl the clouds or the highlights and the train is moving. And this is the... Uh, overexposed image and a train is basically almost out of the window now if I were to just not use a ghosting method what would happen is I would get a photo like this where there's ghosting you can see and this is where the term ghosting comes from you can see little faded um, trains kind of going down the whole track here and if you were to either use the uh, the automatic ghosting or the uh, manual selection sometimes manual works you'll need to use manual just to tell photomatics where you want the ghosting but normally the automatic actually works pretty good so you won't have to ever use manual but if you do I'll show you how to use it in a few seconds but this is what you would get you would get a a, uh, train in exactly where you wanted the uh, photo so let's go ahead and uh, go and process this train photo and I'll show you how to uh, remove ghosting okay so we're back in our photomatix window and I am just going to find that file here these are the three exposures of the train and I will just drag and drop it into photomatix and then we will just hit OK here and OK here and now this is you don't need to worry about this click here and now we have our pre process or the pre-processing options and you we we're gonna play with the remove ghosting here so we're gonna click that and you have an option to either um, do it automatically or uh, with uh, the, a selective deghosting tool now if we were to do it automatically I'll go ahead and click that and hit OK and then Photomatics will process that photo and you'll see in a few seconds what it did and it did a pretty good job so it selected the exposure that it thought would be the perfect one and it processed the image but if you wanted to do it manual I'll show you how to do that sometimes it doesn't work perfect all all the time so um, let me go ahead and just close that out without processing it and then I will just close that out load the exposures again alright so I'm just gonna click and drag back into the photomatix window and then we're just gonna load the exposures again and hit remove ghost and use the selective deghosting tool hit OK and then we're gonna get another window here before we go to the tone mapping window and here is the window here and what we do here we just click on an area and kinda select the area where the train is moving and make a selection around that area so this is where the train has been moving and then we would right click that mark that as the selection so this is the selection so and right click again and set the photo that we want to use so if we wanted to use this photo the overexposed image we would set it to that and then it would use this train but if we return back to the selection mode here we can select the other train that looks better and this would be the train that we want and once we select that, we'll get that train that we want to use in our image. So once we do that, we just hit the OK button and it will process the photo. So if you ever have a problem with the ghosting not selecting the exposure you want, you can do it manually and that's, that'll help get you the photo that you want to use for your HDR image. And then you can just play with the presets. Here's a good one for this particular photo. It looks pretty cool. So you're getting some pixels here. This is because it's a low resolution image so so that's that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you want to learn more about uh, photomatics you can click on the little download link if you're watching this from YouTube go to my captainchemo.com website I'll have the information on photomatics there use my uh, coupon code it's captain chemo um, is my coupon code and you can save I believe it's 15% off the uh, the price so uh, until next time I hope you enjoyed this video uh, this is captain chemo signing out